But I would like to start, like in Barcelona last um, July, by the patient priorities. And there is an evolution of the role of pH patients and pH patient association uh, in our uh, field. Uh, the first pH support group emerged in America, in the United States, in the 1990s, early 1990s. And then countries like France, Germany, and others, they followed. And uh, today, the world patient support includes about 90 patient associations worldwide, some of them are national, and some of them are umbrella organizations, for example, in Europe or in Latin America. When there is no patient association and we have made interviews, uh, it's always a challenge, but we try to mitigate this challenge thanks to the umbrella uh, patient organization. For example, one of my tasks right now in Europe is to offer the same level of expertise for patients throughout the continent. And um, when you were, if you were born in Kosovo or in um, Lithuania, you may not have the same chance than in Germany or Italy or France. So we try to offer patient support throughout the continent with patient-centric networks, and that's very important. Over the past decades, the patient associations have become more and more professional, structured. They have expanded their role from, from um, support to global awareness and advocacy. And now the patients are uh, our best supporters, uh, in, uh, at least uh, in our countries, including United States. So in Europe, we put the patients in the guideline committee. So that's a big thing. Eh? So the first time uh, in the field of primary attention, and you see the names uh, underlined in red. Pisana Ferrari, she's Italian. Uh, she lives between France and Italy. She was diagnosed as a PAH patient in the 1990s. She underwent double lung transplantation, and now she's one of the best patient advocates in the world. At that time, when she was diagnosed, she was a member of European Parliament assistant. She's very gifted in communication. She knows very well uh, the European uh, um, techniques. And Gergely Messaros is a patient advocate. He's not a patient himself. And he now works for the European Reference Network for Rare Lung Disease. So for the first time, um, patients are included, and this sets an important precedent for the future. So the same way we started the World Symposium with the patients, we included patients in the guideline, and at European level, we developed a lay summary guideline for the patients to uh, feel more uh, involved in the guideline development. So if you speak Spanish, if you speak Greek, if you speak uh, uh, Italian, you will find the lay summary in your mother language. So that's very important. And 11 languages are now part of the lay summary for primary hypertension. How do we uh, diagnose the condition? Uh, in the World Symposium, there was a very uh, important task to simplify the beginning of the evaluation, uh, have a stepwise approach, emphasize that you can have a fast track referral for the patients who have risk factors for group one or group four pH, for example, um, history of scleroderma, uh, history of uh, uh, pulmonary embolism, etc. The comorbid conditions with mild pH may be evaluated non-invasively because the vast majority will have left heart disease or chronic lung disease and very mild pulmonary hypertension. And the pH center referral is for specialized workup, as you do uh, here. And hemodynamics can be helpful in non-low risk patients. And of course, uh, imaging, echo, and MRI have a less well-defined role but in the next few years, we will need to improve the added value of these parameters on top of the big three non-invasive measures. Based on this, there is a treatment algorithm. And it is not a guideline. The guidelines have been published in Europe two years ago with a very tedious uh, uh, evidence uh, development using the GRADE approach and the uh, uh, ESC ERS guideline approach. Here, it's a proceeding supported expert opinion, which is very important, because it will help us refining the future guidelines. And you see, for group one pH, and for the group one uh, with major uh, pulmonary vascular remodeling, uh, the initial risk assessment is exclusively to understand whether the patients have a high risk of death 
in the next few months or not a high risk of death. If they don't have a high risk of death, you can start with initial combination therapy of two tablets and um, then you will follow the patient up every three to four months in order to see whether they reach the treatment goal or not. If they are high risk, you need a triple combination therapy, not only with uh, uh, ERA and PD-5 inhibitors, but also with a parenteral prostacyclin, uh, intravenous or subcutaneous hypoprostenol or triprostenol. And these patients, they will be reassessed regularly. And re bear in mind, our goal is low risk, and low risk is not easy to achieve. In my center, about 60% of patients are not low risk at first follow-up meaning that we are in need of new solutions.